and welcome to Cafe Astro Athens. Over this glass of cold brew and this cup of hot coffee, we're going to compare and contrast a lunar base versus a Mars base. Cheers! Now for starters, when using a French press, it only takes about four to five minutes to make a hot cup of coffee, but it can take somewhere between 40 minutes to an hour to make a good glass of cold brew. Sometimes I do 30 minutes. Well, Mars is going to take significantly longer, and then to get to the moon, it'll only take, well, a few days. So let's really dive into what the plan is for building a Mars biosphere versus a lunar base. Starting with the moon, which is just under 240,000 miles away from Earth, or 380,000 kilometers, the moon will take about two to three days to get to. The moon also contains a lot of helium-3, which is used ideally for the fuel for fusion reactors. However, the moon's rotation, as you can see in this diagram, is about 28 Earth days for one day on the moon. So each lunar night lasts for about 354 hours. That's about 14 Earth days. And because of these long nights, it can get very cold on the moon. It can drop to about negative 173 degrees Celsius or negative 279 degrees Fahrenheit at night. This being said about the nights being extremely long and cold, the possibility for the lunar bases would be to have them located at the poles of the moon. So we'll say this right here is the moon. And to be located at the poles because the nights are shorter at the poles. The only thing is that the sun will not be going directly overhead, but instead just be skimming along the horizon. For any solar panels, they would need to be directed at an angle. The walls, if we were to put solar panels on the sides of the walls of a lunar base, they'd have to be set at an angle in order to compensate for the sun's motion, which would be predominantly along the horizon. It wouldn't really reach that high up in the sky if we're going to be located at the poles. Well, also along the equator, there would be a lot of sunlight. So to have a large flat lunar base to collect solar energy would be very beneficial to have right along the equator. But something else that is a possibility is to have the lunar base be located underground, way underground to compensate for that temperature change. There's freezing, freezing temperatures. So if we were to have a lunar base be way underground, it then would, would be buried underneath that lunar dust we spoke about in the last video known as regolith. It has pretty strong thermal insulator qualities as well, so it definitely will help with trapping in any warmth or heat that will be generated by this lunar colony underneath the surface of the moon. A possibility of getting underneath the surface of the moon is by impact upon arrival. So the building a spaceship that is not only strong enough, but highly controlled where it'll be able to impact the moon just enough to be able to bury itself at the right depth beneath the surface of the moon, but be able to still allow for hopefully no damage. Now, much like the power required in order to produce a cup of coffee, the moon will also require power and energy. In order to have an operating lunar base with humans, we will require electricity and power. So let's look at the possibilities. An option is to have an orbiting satellite transmitting power by microwave or laser. Take the International Space Station, for example. It has about 3,300 meters squared of solar panels. The lunar surface would need hundreds of kilowatts of power. If we looked at, say, a 50 kilowatt laser or rectenna, which a rectenna is a type of antenna that converts electromagnetic energy into direct current electricity, we would need a satellite that would be about 400 meters in diameter. And we need about 5,000 meters squared of solar panels. But now let's transition over to Mars, like my cold brew, which took about 75% longer to make. Going to Mars is going to take significantly longer than going to the moon. But what about building Mars colonies and possibly terraforming Mars? I've actually discussed terraforming Mars in quite a few videos um, on my various social media channels, but there are plenty of different ideas. And I'm gonna share those with you guys today. Because if we ever want to truly achieve terraforming Mars and seeing humans live there one day, 
we really have to keep our minds open to all the possibilities of making that planet once again habitable. Now lots of research from the different rovers such as Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity and now the Mars Perseverance rover, they have brought back data showing that Mars likely once was a very wet planet. There may have been life there one at one point. Something happened where Mars no longer has an atmosphere. It also has ice caps that are made of frozen water as well as carbon dioxide. Now the extraordinary astronomer Carl Sagan once suggested that melting the ice caps may be able to produce enough carbon dioxide to release into the atmosphere to help warm the planet and possibly aid in developing a bit more of an atmosphere than Mars currently has. However, that may only be temporary and because it does not have an electromagnetic field, the atmosphere will eventually just get blown away by solar wind and radiation. So we'll say that this is the sun and what I have here are not only solar winds, but also solar radiation that really significantly impacts Mars. And without Mars having an electromagnetic field, this would completely blow away any formation of an atmosphere. So trying to get an electromagnetic field is a vital part of trying to terraform Mars. So an electromagnetic field would be looking at the poles where there would be a current of electricity that would come from the core of Mars, typically. This is what an electromagnetic field, such as on Earth, exists. And that would be great. It would really help trap in an atmosphere and then any of the solar radiation could pass through the atmosphere, warm up the planet, and some may be able to pass back through the atmosphere, but will really help with making the climate a bit more suitable for biological life as we know it. A possibility of creating a type of electromagnetic field around Mars would be to install something known as a dipole at a point known as Lagrange point number one. Mars has two moons. And those moons act gravitationally on Mars, as well as Mars acting gravitationally on those two moons. In addition, Mars acts gravitationally on the Sun, and the Sun acts gravitationally on Mars. Constant forces, that's what I mean by saying acting gravitationally. There are forces in space. So, somewhere, I'm just going to draw it here, it isn't exactly where it's located. But Lagrange point one, all right, L1, is where there's a point of stability. It's like an equal level of forces from all of these opposing gravitational forces where it would be able to ideally park in space. So to install something there, such as there's satellites that are installed at Lagrange points. Um, there, there's a lot of places where you could park things in space and it can remain relatively stationary and not get completely pulled away by another form of gravity. It can actually remain quite stationary, of course not considering a random asteroid impact that might happen, but Lagrange point one, if say we were to install say a type of magnetosphere dipole, that is a type of thing <laughs> that would have positive charges and negative charges. And so if that were to be installed, that would be able to produce enough of an electromagnetic field around itself, but it would be able to eventually encapsulate Mars from its tail. So this would be the magnetosphere right here. And if it were to produce an electromagnetic field around itself, part of it would also be transmitted into space. And this part right here would be the tail. If Mars were to be located right there, it would be encapsulated by, well, this energy field. And that's where Mars may be able to have an electromagnetic field. One more really cool thing about Mars is that it contains carbon dioxide, which I mentioned earlier, in places such as the poles, but it's also found in its dirt. And something else really cool is the Mars Perseverance rover, which just launched about one week ago. It arrives to Mars February of 2021. We'll say this is the Perseverance rover. It has a device called MOXIE. And MOXIE is capable of 
converting carbon dioxide into oxygen. And so if it's going to be able to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen and then be able to store it, this is the first step to being able to create such something such as biospheres on Mars. These biospheres will be able to trap in oxygen. Then maybe we can start launching plants and have plant life growing and have crops starting to grow, start building farms. And then eventually when humans come, we may be able to, well, live in these domes with the oxygen that's being converted from moxie on the Perseverance rover. One final thought about Mars is a way to possibly build biospheres out of something known as silica aerogel. Now I've discussed silica aerogel before because it's this extraordinary substance that was created by scientists at Harvard and NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It's mainly composed of air and silica and it looks like a little cloud and you're able to make as big of pieces as you want or smaller pieces. I was able to actually hold it once um, at the launch of the InSight lander to Mars and it was originally meant for the insulation of spacecraft and possibly even equipment and spacesuits for the future. However, the idea to build domes out of this isn't too far-fetched because for one, it allows for sunlight to pass through and radiate the surface, heat up the surface, and not completely radiate back out. It traps it in, creating a greenhouse effect. You guys have maybe heard about a runaway greenhouse effect that's happening on Venus due to its super thick atmospheric clouds. And on Mars, that wouldn't really be a bad thing because Mars is so cold that in order to have a heating system on Mars would be a really, really good thing for future human Martians. So with all that being said, what would you choose? A lunar base or a Martian base? I think I would still go with for sure both, but I would go with the Mars colony. I think it would be really interesting. Having a lunar colony will definitely happen, but I think Mars has a potential for making that into a fully habitable planet once again. All right, guys, until next time, cheers.